Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be starting a new semi-series. It's not going to be a weekly series kind of thing. It's going to be more like an I'll upload them as a kind of done thing. Since the these are going to be a lot more involved and they're going to take more time to make. So I've been waiting, wanting to do this series for a long time, but I kept getting put off, but no longer. We're going to do this one now. Now I've been playing Final Fantasy XIV for a long time and I know from experience that jumping into an MMO like this one is incredibly daunting, especially if you've never played one before. Right at the very beginning it kind of throws a whole load of information at you, a whole load of options and it's hard to make out what's the correct one, what affects what and all of that. So I figured it might be a good idea to do a few beginner's guides since there's a lot of old information floating around on the internet and over the years a lot has changed. So today's tutorial is going to be from the very beginning and it's going to be about setting up your character. So character creation and where to go from there, what options affect what and stuff like that. So without further ado, off to the main menu we go. Leah, do you mind helping us out? Thank you. Right guys, thanks for that Leah. I'll hit back up with you later on. So, once you've installed the game and patches and everything like that, you'll be brought to the main menu. After all, your login screen and everything like that, you'll be brought here and this screen will change depending on what expansion you've got installed shadowbringers being the current one there are obviously the earlier ones as well so when you're on this menu first thing i'll suggest is you choose your data center if you head down to data center here second option down and you'll head to this menu right here so there's three different data centers or data hubs in the world. Obviously you've got your North American, you've got your European, you've got your Japanese. The one you pick, generally, if you're in England, you will pick European one because that has the lowest ping, less chance of lag, stuff like that as general quality of life stuff. Me being me, I'm actually, I actually play on the on the American data center. The reason why I play on the American data center is because of my work schedule. Living in the UK when I'm off work, there's hardly anyone on online in the European data centers. So it's harder to get groups for content and stuff. So it works for me. Basically pick whichever one you want. Each data center has its own Oh, sorry, each data hub has its own set of data centers. So North American, you have Ether, Primal and Crystal. And each of those data centers has their own group of servers. I'm not going to go too much into the server side of things because we'll probably do that in a later data center. Later data center? I'm going to, probably going to do that in a later episode. Whereas you would come in here and you would pick which data center you want to play on out of obviously these options. Once you've done that, I'm going to flip back to, you confirm the data center. So you go, like obviously I'll click ether because I'm on thingy one. It will connect you to that data center. And naturally it will bring you to this menu right here. I'm using my hands like you can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> we'll bring you to this screen here. If you are starting from scratch, there'll be no character in the main in the main bit right in the center. And all the information to the left hand side, race, clan, name day, stuff like that, that will all be question marks. You then go to new character and click to make a new character which will bring you to the character creator. First option you have to pick is your race and gender. So we'll briefly run through these. 
you have here, which are your basic humans kind of deal. Uh, male, female, other here. You, your basic humans. And then next you have the Elizin, which are elf-like people. Very tall, very tight, like uptight kind of thing. You know, the very formal, formal kind of race. And you get the females as well. And you get the dwarf race, which is Lalafell. Which are obviously male and female. They are super cute. They suffer from mild mockery in game, but it's all done in good spirit. No one actually, <laughs> it's all done in good spirit. It's a bit of a meme at this point. Uh, and you move on to the Mikote, which are cat people. The cat, you know, cat race. More cat human hybrid things. This is what Leah is. Leah is a Makote. Get male and female. And then you get the Rogadin, which are quite big, quite big guys and women. They are kind of like the seafaring race. Quite good, actually. Some of them are quite good. It's harder to, in my opinion, it's harder to make a really good looking Rogadin. Uh, but it has been done. It has been done. And then next we have the Aura, which used to be to some these last three. They're a little bit different. The Aura used to be locked behind the Stormblood. Sorry, F Heaven's Ward. Get me confirmation correct. They used to be locked behind the Heaven's Ward expansion. So you needed to own and install the Heaven's Ward expansion in order to be the Aura race. But recently, they recently in June, June, July this year, that changed because they updated the free trial. And because they updated the free trial, they updated the base game as well. So when you buy the base game, you get a free upgrade to the Heaven's Ward expansion. So you get the base game and Heaven's Ward as standard now, which made Aura unlocked at the beginning. So you can actually start off as an Aura now. You get male and female of those. Males are quite big, females are quite petite. Now these last two, Prothgar and Viera, these two are actually still locked by the current expansion so in order to be, be a Hrothgar or Viera you need to own and, own and have installed the Shadowbringers expansion pack now obviously that probably will change at some point in the future but at the minute they are locked so on your game there's a good chance that Hrothgar and Viera will not appear on your list the other things about Hrothgar and Viera, as you've probably noticed, Hrothgars can only be male. There are no female Hrothgars in the game. And as such, there are only female Vieras. There are no male Vieras. So if you are a Hrothgar, you are forced to be male. And if you're Viera, you're forced to be female. There are some other issues with them as well at the minute. Mainly to do with headgear and hairstyles. Because they're so different to other races. A lot of the old headgear and hairstyles don't work with the Viera and Hrothgar head models. So they aren't available. Those are the two pitfalls with Hrothgar and Viera. So obviously, if you do have the expansion pack, the current expansion pack, you'll have to keep that in mind that headgear doesn't show up on them quite a lot of the time. So, once we've picked the once you have picked your chosen race and gender, then we're gonna go Miko. Make another Miko Femme. You can confirm that. 
and that will bring you to your second choice, which is clan. You get to each race, both male and female, have two different clans, and they look different. They have different like aesthetics. So different origins, different aesthetics and stuff. So you get Seekers of the Sun. Seekers of the Sun Makotes have more cat-like eyes and they are of a fair, fairer skin. The Keepers of the Moon are more lighter, like darker skin because they hang out a lot at night being Keepers of the Moon. They have rounder eye, rounder pupils and they actually have noticeable fangs. They're the main differences between the two Mikote races. If we go into the next one. Oh, sorry, before before we head off, sorry. Completely forgot that. You'll see on the left hand side of the screen, you'll get some blurb about the Seeker tribes or the tribe that you've chosen or selected. And at the very bottom, you'll see the starting attributes. Now, these seem important across all the races. They don't really mean anything at all. You can kind of ignore them because by the time you reach level 50, the difference in between the races base stats, it's like so fine. It's pretty much negligible. Don't have to pay them any attention. All right. So let's go. May as well go Seekers of the Sun. Mm -hmm. Right, so this is where you get the actual appearance. So you've picked picked your race and gender. You've picked your clan. Those two options will determine what options you have for your appearance category. So, start from the top. We have, obviously, height. Each race's maximum and minimum height will vary depending on race. Obviously, you pick the height that you want and confirm. Similar with bus size, varies depending on race. Obviously, you'll only get bus size on females, naturally. Obviously, bus size as per skin color. Obviously, you can pick anything from that palette on the right hand side. The this is where your race, this is where your clan comes into play, because on the McCourt is the Sunseekers get this palette. Just more oranges and pinks, orange, pinks, and browns. And the Sun Seekers are more is more blue, purple, and and Sun Seekers is more blue, purple, and grey, like darker colours, which I shall quickly flip to now. Right, so obviously once you picked your skin colour, you then go to tail shape tail ones you get different styles the only races with tails are makote and aura makote is being cat people the more like cats auras or i say dragon they're not really dragon people but everyone calls them dragon people because they've got scales they have different they have like lizard tails basically different styles of tail so depending on which tail style that you like obviously just pick that tail style Length, like anything, you can have a short tail or you can have a long tail. And then after that, you could jump into hairstyle. Now, there are various hairstyles for each race. Each race has, they do share some of the hairstyles, but not all of them. So there are some race specific hairstyles. And there are, in game as well, there are actual hairstyle hairstyles you can unlock so there's some hairstyles that are not available like on the character creation we will pick that one just because this one we have hair color your main color anything on this palette but if you go along to the left you'll see that little highlights you can add highlights into your hair so you can add a second color in this case in this particular hairstyle obviously it varies per hairstyle let's go purple with a bit of red you can turn those on and off. Next is your face shape. There's usually four to choose from. In well, in this race, there's four to choose from. Some of the others is less, and some there's more. The average is about four. 
Just basically pick which one you want, obviously. I'm going to go with that. And uh, next time is jaw. Four different types of jaw. Eye shape. There are six different eye shapes. Iris size is large and small. Eye color. You can pick from anything from this palette. And much like the hairstyle, you use an eye, uh, an option here for odd eyes. So you can have two different colored eyes if you want to. So if you confirm that. Eyebrows, obviously different eyebrow shapes. Nose, again, six different types. Four different mouth types. Your lip color, which will be, I think that's, I'm not sure if lip color is female specific. I believe it is. I'll have to check if that's correct. Obviously you have light and dark. So it's like your lipstick basically. You can have a light version of it or a dark version of it or none. Let's pick that one. And next is the facial features. Our facial features will vary, varies depending on race. So these particular ones are exclusive to Makotes or Makote females. And there'll be a set that's exclusive to Makote males as well as all the other races as well. You can choose, you can select all of these or you can select none of these. It's entirely up to you. Next is tattoos, which in Mikote's case is only two. Again, you can pick one, all or none of these. Naturally, if you have tattoos on your face, then you can change the color of them here from anything on that palette. And next is on to face paint. So that would be your class as your like other makeup, your eye makeup and rouge and stuff. Again, uh, actually I think you don't have, yes, you can only pick one of these and it can be changed later after the, uh, when you're in game, this one can be changed. I tend to pick that. And again, same as the, uh, Makeup, same as the lip color. You can have dark and you can have light, and you can pick any color you like off this palette with that for now. And then last but not least, for the appearance form, you have your voice. So at the very top, you have a little box around different emote styles. Now these are the four different or five, sorry, five different emotes that actually your character makes a noise with, uses the voice. It's Twelve different voice types. And I would heartily recommend going through them all before you make a decision. Because some of the voices can get incredibly annoying. And if you want, if you pick the wrong voice and you want to change it at a later date, you have to buy it with real money, a thing called a Fantasia, which will bring you back to this menu so you can change your, the look of your character from a call out so you can make your character male from male, jump from male and female and change race and all that. That has to be paid for with a Fantasia. So obviously if you're playing an MMO, you've got to be playing this character for a long time. So you've got to make sure your voice, the voice that you use for your emotes is not annoying. So basically you've got to pick the more least objectionable voice. I think I'm a 12. No, I'm not. Seven. Seven's the one I've got. <laughs> and I've been playing with it for seven years, so. <laughs> hey, it was one year per thing. Sorry. Uh, so I've been playing with it for seven years and I'm not not annoyed with it yet. So seven's a good choice. 
third one is your laugh or your chuckle. Fourth one is yes. And the last one is no. So, pick your voice. Rule number one, pick your voice very carefully. It's probably one of the most important choices that you'll pick in this character creation. <laughs> so once you've got your one voice of choice, you can, you know, you've got your appearance all down. What you can do is, in the bottom here, you've got your environment. You can pick, cycle through these, and you can mostly move your camera around. This is where you can, it'll put your character in the actual, in one of the zones that's in game with natural light, with the in game lighting. So you can actually tell what your character looks like in the actual world itself. So you have Limsa, you have Gridania, you have Thanalyn, and then you have the in room or an in room kind of environment, indoor environment. So you can use that to check, make sure everything looks okay before you hit go. So once you're happy with your character, obviously you can click on confirm. It'll ask you if you want to save it. I would personally, I would pick yes, just in case. It's always handy to have it there as a backup. In this particular case, I'm going to hit no. It will then bring you to this menu, the Ozine calendar. This is where you pick your birthday, essentially. This means, generally, this means absolutely nothing. It doesn't affect in-game stuff at all. Something for role-playing purposes, should you want to. And again, with these ones, this is your patron deity. Because there are 12 gods in Eorzea. This is, you could class this as your star sign. So from left to right will be January, February. So you pick your month. Again, this move, this means nothing at all to any gameplay stuff. It's pretty much there for role playing. Should you want to do, should you want to role play a character? Basically pick whichever one you want. Makes no difference. Right guys, so this is your next big decision. This is your where you pick your starting class. Now your starting class will affect, the one you pick will affect what role you have in combat, what skills you get, obviously, and what city state you start in. There's three city states to choose from. Which one you get depends on which from the, you know, which job you pick from the start. Right, so before we jump into the different classes and what the you know, what role to play in combat would help if I explain the roles. Three different roles in combat. There are tanks, there are healers, and there are damage dealers, or in game you tend to call them DPS. Tanks. Tanks are the crazy people who run in first, in a combat first, and get get the attention of the boss or the enemies. And their their job is to keep the attention of all the enemies and the bosses onto them, because they have a higher health points, they have more defense, so they can take hits quite well. To the point where so it let, lets the healer do their job and it lets the damage dealers do their job without being killed. That's a very basic, <laughs> very basic thing for a tank. It's basically be, be Elvis Presley. Get the attention of everything and everything around you and keep it on you so that the others can go interrupted. Next, obviously you have your healer. They are responsible for keeping the party alive. Mainly if everything's going well. The healer will only have to really focus on the tank, generally. Obviously, it varies. So healers will obviously will heal, heal the party and provide 
generally provide buffs and debuffs to the group. Keep everyone in fighting shape. Fairly easy stuff. And then your damage dealers. Obviously they're the one they're the stuff that kills everything really quickly. That's their main job. Is to kill stuff. <laughs> it's very 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 brief and probably not great explanation of the three roles. <laughs> but it works for me. So that being said, we're gonna jump into this list here. And I'll give a brief explanation of each class and where they start, what city state they start in. Right. So first on the list, Gladiator. Gladiators fight using a sword and shield and they are a tank class. And they start in Uldar. Uldar is a desert kind of city, de desert area. So they'll start in Uldar. Right, so second on the list is Pugilist. They use a weapon called a Hora, which are uh, like brass knuckles, one in each hand. They are really good at punching stuff. They also start in Uldar, and they are a DPS class. Next on the list, we have Marauder. They wield an axe, generally a big axe. They are the second tank class. They start in Limsa Liminsa. That city is based on an island and they are very, it's very shipping based. It's kind of like a port town, coastal town. It's a very cool city to be fair. It's spend a lot of my time there. Next up, we have Lancer. Now, Lancers, as you can probably tell, use a lance or spear. They start, they are a DPS class and they start in Gridania. Now, Gridania is a city in the woods. It's a very nature, natural kind of city. Uh, it's another good place to start. And last out of the titles of war, you have archers. They also start in Gridania and they are a DPS class as well. They are used bows and arrows. And then after that, we have the Disciples of Magic which are your casters. First of the disciples of magic is the conjurer. Now, conjurers are a healer class and they start in Gradenia as well. And they, they use white magic and a staff. Second disciple of magic is the thaumaturge. Thaumaturges use black magic. They are heavy on the big explosions. If you like big explosions, Thaumaturge is the one for you. They have big, big explosions. <laughs> and they are, they are a DPS class. And the Thaumaturge starts in Uldar as well. And then last but not least, we have Arcanist. Arcanist is a weird one. Arcanist uses a spell book. And an Arcanist start in Limsa Liminsa as well. They are a pet class. So an Arcanist can summon a little creature called a Carbuncle. And that you, they use that pet as well as their own spells to attack the enemies. It starts off as a DPS class until level 30. And then at level 30, you get a choice. You can either or keep it as a DPS, which will then turn into Summoner which summons more powerful monsters instead of the carbuncle, keeping it reasonably the same. Or you can take it in a different direction and have it become a healer. And when you take a healer, you lose your carbuncle and it becomes, you summon a fairy instead. And you use the fairy to help, fairy will help heal your party, provide debuffs and buffs for your party, as well as you doing your own spells as well. So it's quite an interesting job. I do quite like Scholar. But that's the only job that splits into two different ones. So that being said, Conjurer is the only job you can start off as as a healer. The other one you have to develop further down the line. So take, but if you pick an Arcanist to be a Scholar, you need to bear that in mind. So once you picked your starting job, you're going to pick Arcanist. You'll then get to this menu, which is what server you want to play on. Now it will automatically select you one, try and select you one. 
as it is in the middle of the screen to try to put us on adamantois. Generally, they will try and push certain servers that have a low population because they like to fill up everywhere equally as best they can. You can, by all means, you can jump into the one that's the, the world that they suggest, but you're not forced into it. You don't have to. So you can click on, you can either just click yes, or you can click on select another. And it'll bring you up into this top right hand corner where you can pick which one you want. Some of them are locked because, well, Gilgamesh, for example, is locked because they are to capacity, they're full. So you can't join Gilgamesh as and when, but it's, to be fair, it's not really a nice place. <laughs> on a personal level, it's not for me. It's not my kind of people. I, however, I am on Siren. My character is on Siren. Whichever one you pick, obviously, is up to you. If you have a, I will say this, if you have a friend that you want to play the game, who's already playing the game and you want to play with them, you have to pick the same server that they are on. There are some rules to it, which is we're not going to get into today. There is a feature that you can use to play with other people on other servers. But keeping it very simple, you kind of you need to be on the same server as the person you want to play with. But bear that in mind when you're picking your server. I will, however, also stipulate Siren is one of the nicest servers you'll find in game. So Siren, if you're in American data center, Siren is a good choice. And not just because I'm there. Right. So after you've picked your server, you click confirm. And then you get to the last option. Which will be your character's name. You have a forename and a surname. You need both your forename and surname must be between 2 and 15 characters long. And cannot total more than 20 characters combined. Or, since a lot of them will probably be taken, there's obviously a lot of things, you can generate a random one which uses the random, na random name generator, uses the name and conventions of the race that you pick. If you pick any name you like, as long as it's not taken. So once you've finally worked out your name, you can click on confirm. You'll get then get the screen and you click begin it'll ask you to begin a new game with this character you click ok it'll launch you straight into the opening cutscene and it'll start you on your adventure right guys so that's been an in-depth look at the character creation system i hope it's helped however if you do have any questions feel free to ask in the comment section below or on my social media i will be super happy to answer them thank you all for watching i hope you have enjoyed it if you have liked it, please hit that like button, share, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. Leah, have I forgotten anything? Thank you. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. Hope you've enjoyed it. All that's left to be said is goodbye from me. And a goodbye from her. And as always, shall see you all on the flip side. Bye-bye.